I'll go myself. So he wrapped himself up in human flesh and he became sin in the flesh that he might condemn sin in the flesh that the righteousness of God might be revealed in us. If you wait on too much other stuff, I'm just about done because the stuff we ought to shout about is that we are not hanging on that cross but Christ did. And what held him to the cross was our sin. Peter stood up and preached to people and told them Jesus Christ the son of God died for the sins of the world the one you crucified the one you thought that you were getting over on God fixed that thing where he could surrender his life cause you do need to know they did not take his life but he laid his life down freely uh huh and just as he laid it down he could have picked it up again but because he, he had mercy upon me bless his holy name he died on a cross of Calvary and it's because of what happened on that Friday and that Sunday that made a difference because somebody said it ain't how you start it's how you end he started up Via Della Rosa it looked like it was, but on Sunday morning he started on a Friday day. he was put in a tomb on a Friday but on a Sunday morning how he ended up and because of that I started out a sinner but because of how he ended up I'll end up a saint I wish I had time to, I ain't gonna hang now I, I wanna hang now but, but look my brothers and sisters if you wanna shout about anything shout about the cross of Christ shout about the redemptive work of Christ but a healthy church enjoys worship with God and the worship of God so a healthy church has a joyful worship it's in verse 41 then they that gladly received his word were baptized they did something and we talked about that but listen it's something they going to church or being in church or being in worship was not a it was it was it was not a hassle it was it was not uh -oh. it, it was not something hard to do it was, it was not something I had to do they, they didn't have to do it but after hearing the good news of the gospel they wanted to be in fellowship with God and with the other saints Listen, they gladly say with me gladly it gives the connotation of the understanding of excitement it gives uh, re it, they were jubilant they were ecstatic they, they were happy and listen anytime you hear good news that's what the gospel is if you hear good news good news is good in bad times and I think right now in our culture we need to hear some good news because if you've been putting your stock in, in the country if you've been putting your stock in the culture if you've been putting all of your eggs in one basket if you've been depending on your job they're, they're cutting jobs like like white on rice they're, they're cutting out benefits they're cutting stuff in the culture people are getting pink slips people are getting fired people are getting set apart finances are down everything is crashing but listen in the midst of a crashing culture the church of Christ is still marching on is it anybody here who understands that that the cross principles and the Christ principles really work in a crashing culture because listen if you got the Christ principle in your life I mean if I wanted to go Greek I talk about Christos but I, I ain't gonna do that Christos curios but, but listen I'm trying to say something that if you know Christ and you keep Christ before you even in your crises he'll, he'll give you consolation and comfort is it anybody up in here get, get excited like I get excited when the storms of life are raging when the winds of persecution are blowing I'm still relaxed because I rely upon him and not on myself. When finances get funny, I still get relaxed. Mm -hmm. When my chains get strained, I, I still trust in him. When the banks don't honor the card, I still know that God is able to supply my... Is it anybody up in here who knows God is able to supply your every need? When everything else around me is crumbling, I may not have enough to pay my bills but God makes sure that I get just enough to keep me just where he wants me to be 
you got to have the Christ principle in your life. I wish I could go someplace else, but they gladly received the word of God. It was, I mean, it was not something they were made to do. They heard the good news of the gospel, and good news is always good in bad times. How many of you need the good news? You need to know that in spite of what you got to go through, God still got it under control. In spite of the turmoil in your life, God still got it all in his hand. Is it anybody up in here? You know God has it all in his hand. And it really doesn't matter what you take me through. And then you ought to be able to tell your haters, thank your haters. Because see, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have fallen down. On my knees, thank you for messing with me. Cause now I know that God is able to prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yeah, yeah, you thank you, thank you. Thank, I'm, I didn't mean to go there, but every time I apply the cross principle and the Christ principle, He covers me. Is there anybody up in here? You know. He, he covers you, so don't be upset. Don't, don't, don't make church a burden. Church ought to be a blessing. You ought to be grateful. When you get ready to come here, you ought to start shouting in your spirit. Because you know it could have been worse this week. You could have been the one in the accident. You could have been in the obituary column. I mean, you know, maybe, just maybe, you're behind on your note. But maybe they could have ev evicted you already. Bless God and everything is all right. It's something about putting Christ before my critical crisis that helps me to understand I can have comfort even when stuff is crumbling around me. Come on, talk to me a minute here. And I do want to share with you, like I shared last week, that praiseless, listen, praiseless proclamation or proclamation that is praiseless is pitiful. Uh huh. It's pitiful because it will not prop people to be persuaded. You, 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 are you hearing me? So we've got to be able to give a testimony. I received the word of God, and the word of God did something in my heart. How many of you thank God that the word has done something? How many of you gladly receive the word of God? I ain't talking about just coming to church now. I ain't talking about just shouting now. But I'm talking about hiding the word of God in your heart. If it wasn't for the word of God down in my heart, I'd have killed myself by now. If it wasn't for me having the word of God in my heart, the devil would have overthrown me by now. If it wasn't for the word of God, I'd have tripped up and hung myself by now. But I bless God that his word in my heart keeps me in the midst of my storm. Do I have any witnesses up in there? It's something about his word that gives me peace on the inside. Can I preach this today, y'all? I thank God for his word. Peter preached, and when Peter preached the good news, those people said, hey, what do we need to do? And Peter said, repent and then be baptized. And then come on here. It's a demonstration that there's a change in your life. And my sisters and my brothers, somebody here needs to be able to be a public demonstration that something has happened on the inside. I'm not just talking about going down in the water because I've been in the water. Mm -hmm. I've already been to the water and I've already been baptized. I've already been converted and I feel all right. A whole lot of folk have that testimony. But after the water, yeah, they still do the same old thing. But I'm talking about people who've been in the water and your soul has been converted. And when you stand up, you don't feel the same no more. You don't do the same stuff anymore. Maybe I should say you don't do it as much as you used to do it anymore. But at least there's a d development of growth in your life. Is it anybody here you're happy about the word of God? God help me here. I'm about to get excited. But I think I need to keep this going here because it says, verse 41, and they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day that were added unto them about 3,000 souls. It started off 120. Now you got 3,120. Okay? Did y'all catch that? There ought to be enormous growth. And the reason is, is because somebody is actually sharing the word. And if we share the word, there is divine placement that takes place. Come on, talk to me somebody. See, I told you, you can join the church. You can join the local fellowship but you got to be born into 
the family of God. And I found this out, brother deacons, that what God does is he he sends people. Uh huh. The preachers, he sends people. Yeah, yeah. Church, he sends people because there are concentric circles of witnessing opportunities that each of us have. There's some folk that I know that young won't know. There's some folk that young know that uh, Gilbert won't know. There's some folk. Are oh, y'all catching this? Are oh, y'all getting it? There's some people that Collins might know that a uh, Humphrey won't know. There's some people yeah, as long as, but if all of us in our circle of influence begin not to just share a word, but be a word. Okay, because you, you don't know, you just might be the only Bible that somebody might ever read. So wherever you are, you don't have to carry a big Bible. I'm going to preach it, y'all. I'm going to preach it. You don't have to carry a big Bible or wear a big cross around your neck to indicate that you are a Christian. Just be who you are. 